Let's learn how to make this professional sidebar design and animation in Figma super easily with absolutely no code. Grab the free Figma file in the link in the description down below to follow along with me. This design can really be broken down into two major steps, the actual sidebar and then the cards that pop up as we move through the flow. The sidebar itself is pretty simple, just a handful of text, some dividers, and a bunch of icons, which really are the secret to a great sidebar. I've attached this style guide in the Figma file, so if you really want to design this from scratch, it should be pretty easy. Anyways, the cards themselves are also pretty simple, but I want to point out the very subtle outline around it, and basically everything else on here. This allows us to use a pretty compact color guide, with most of our colors being pure white or very close to white. There's also a very subtle drop shadow on the pop ups with these settings. Notice how we're not using a transparent black, but instead a very light gray. Let's get into animating this thing. Starting off with our base frame here, we can hold option and drag out our next frame. We're going to be duplicating things a lot, so it's important to know that. To start off, we'll add our hover rectangle and get it positioned below our text. On this frame, we want to set the opacity to zero. Make sure to use the one up here for everything that we do instead of the one in the fill down here. We're going to come and grab this rectangle here and set the opacity to 100%. Switch into prototyping mode in the top right, and then we can grab our rectangle here and drag a node out from it to our next frame. Here, our interaction will be while hovering and our animation will be smart animate. We'll be using these settings mostly, but switching between while hovering and on click for the majority of our animations. Switching back into design mode in the top right, we can grab our second frame here and paste in our options menu. We'll get that lined up nice to the right, and then we can go ahead and set the opacity on it to 0%. Go ahead and duplicate this frame, and then we're gonna come in here and set our menu to 100% opacity. But we only want these rectangles to pop up when we're hovering on them. So let's go ahead and select all of them and then set the opacity to 0%. Holding option, we can grab our frame and duplicate it again. And then we can grab the rectangle and the two elements here and set that opacity to 100%. Coming back to our previous frame, we only want this to show up when we actually click on quick actions, this rectangle here. So let's switch into prototyping mode one more time. Come in here, grab our rectangle and drag a node from it to our next frame and we'll have the trigger on click and the animation be smart animate. Then we can come back to this frame here and grab the rectangle that we hid, drag a node out from that to our next frame and switch the trigger to while hovering. Now, if we go ahead and preview this, it's actually looking really good so far. But if we wanna step it up a notch, we can come back to our editor, come over to this frame here and select all of our transparent menu at the moment and slide it down. It doesn't matter too much how much we slide it down, but just give it a couple of pixels. Now, when we preview it, we get this really nice slide up animation too. For the rest of the links, we just repeat the process we went through three more times and connect everything up to Smart Animate until we get something like this. Let's grab this frame and go ahead and duplicate it. And then we can come in here and delete all of the content on our card except for the card itself and then paste in our pop-up content next. Let's grab our background card and just adjust the height so that everything fits in there nicely. Let's go back to our integrations frame way down here, grab this rectangle and copy the name of it. Then we'll come back up to our search bar and paste it in and make sure that they are in fact the same. The reason we do this is because of how Figma Smart Animate works. Figma searches the old frame and new frame for matching layer names. If the names match, it assumes that they're the same element and animates it as such. If it has a different name, it assumes that they're two separate objects and fades the first one out and the second one in. So if we come back down here and grab this frame, grab our rectangle and drag a node up to our next frame, have the trigger to be on click and add a little bit of extra time here. Make sure the trigger is on click here 
And then if we hop into our prototype, we can see that it results in a really cool animation where this rectangle slides up to become our search bar. When we get to this part of the flow, we don't have any labels for these icons here. So let's add some. I'm gonna paste in a quick little description of Notion here, and then we can go ahead and grab this frame and duplicate it. We'll leave this frame down here as is, but for this one up here, let's grab it and slide it down a touch, as well as make it fully transparent. Then let's also come down here and grab the rectangle behind the Notion logo and make the fill just ever so slightly off white. And then all we need to do is grab our Notion up at the top, switch into prototyping mode and drag a node out between the two and change the trigger to while hovering. And then if we check out our prototype, we get a very nice hover interaction whenever we hover on Notion. We can repeat this process for all of the other icons here, which is what I've done here for a fully interactive feeling. Next, we're gonna duplicate this frame. We'll come up here and slide this down and change the opacity back to zero, as well as set this background back to pure white. Then I'm gonna copy in our new content and let's drag down this rectangle so that everything will fit in very nicely. We're then gonna come back to our Notion rectangle here and set the stroke to be a bright yellow and change the weight to be darker. Then hit Command or Control D and grab our bottom rectangle here. Let's grab an effect and we'll have layer blur and set that up to something like 24 pixels. Now that we have a nice focus state on that, let's connect these two. So come back to our previous frame, grab our group and switch into prototyping mode and then drag a node out to our next frame and the trigger will be on click. Next, let's create this connect hover effect that you can see right here. Let's go ahead and dupe our frame here and then we will get a nice link icon in here and position it next to our connect text and scooch our connect text over. Go back to the previous frame and pop in our link, but move it over ever so slightly so it overlaps with our connect text. Then hit K on our keyboard and scale down our link and turn the opacity to zero. Connect this rectangle with a hover interaction to our next frame. And just like that, we've got a very nice hover interaction. Let's grab this frame and duplicate it one more time and then come in here and delete all of our requirements. And instead, we're gonna replace it with our loading dialog. So grab the frame and we'll paste in our loading dialog here. We're gonna connect the previous frame with a click trigger to this one, just like so. Then let's grab our loading frame and duplicate it four times. So there's one and two, three, four. There we go. Leave this very first frame as is, and then we're gonna come in here, grab our icon, and set the rotation to 180 degrees. Leave this next one as is, don't touch anything. And then on our fourth one here, once again, we'll set the transform to 180 degrees, leaving the last one exactly the same. To hook this up, let's come all the way back to our top one here, and drag out a node from the frame itself. Our trigger is going to be on delay, and we will grab a delay of 300 milliseconds. Then let's come into curve, and this will be the only time that we actually create a custom spring for ourselves. We're gonna set the stiffness to 550, and set the dampening to 40, and leave the mass as it is. Do the exact same thing for all of the rest of the frames. And now if we check out our animation, when we hit connect, we get this awesome spinning loading animation. All right, last step, I promise. Let's duplicate our frame and then delete all of the loading text in there. Select the frame itself and we can paste in our success text. Just like we did with that rectangle before, let's make sure that the name of this icon here is exactly the same as the name of this icon down here. So that smart animate knows that they're actually the same elements and animates them as such. We're gonna come into our Notion rectangle and delete this blurred background here. We're also gonna change the stroke of this from our bright yellow to a black. And we're also gonna add this cute check mark in here. Now we could leave it at this, but I want this check mark to slide in instead of just fading in. 
So let's grab a rectangle here and draw it out to be the exact same size as our square. Give it the same border radius too, and then drag it below our check mark. We'll grab all three of those, come up to the top right here, and hit use as mask. That's all we need to do on this frame, so let's grab our mask group, copy it, and come back to our frame down here, and hit paste. There we go, it's in there quite nicely. So let's grab our check mark and this shape here, and just slowly nudge them out of the way, so that they're not visible anymore. Finally, last step, let's take this frame, hop into prototyping mode one last time, and drag a node out between the two to connect them after a delay of 300 milliseconds, and we can set our curve back to the regular ease out. And there we have it guys, a fully prototyped working sidebar in Figma, zero code, super easy to put together, but very interactive, and it just looks super great. Remember to grab the free files from the link in the description below, and leave a comment for me if you enjoyed this type of video, and I'll make more. Other than that, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.